So, uh, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with Chef, but it's a configuration and management utility to manage either the cloud or your personal cloud hardware that you might have in your colo. Um, by the way, I'm Brian Scott. Uh, I work for the Walt Disney Company, uh, senior systems admin. Um, chef. So, a lot of times people uh, will write recipes to configure and manage their systems either on hardware or in the cloud and not figure to test any other code. Um, since you're writing code for your infrastructure, it only makes sense to treat your infrastructure as code. And obviously when we write code, especially like in a Rails app, you want to use RSpec or something to write your test cases. Um, so in this case, I have to solve a problem. Uh, how do we test Chef, right? Uh, basically, before you push any of your new configuration into production, you want to have it uh, fully tested. this. So why do we want to test Chef? Uh, because we should treat our infrastructure as code, ensure integrity across your infrastructure, test code changes, and just because. Um, there's a couple of components to get this set up, and basically what this is, is it's a test framework that I put together uh, to test uh, our Chef recipes from front to end. So it tests us for a lot of recent tax, uh, it tests for uh, validation, of the code itself and whether the actual recipe will run on a node. Uh, first thing, I use like, Jenkins, but you can use uh, Hudson, you can use LiveMaven, uh, any type of CI server you can pretty much use. The, the abstraction of the jobs might just change a little bit. Uh, in this case, uh, I'm, I am going to be posting the jobs for Jenkins on my blog, which I will be sharing at the end of the slide presentation. Uh, <coughs> Vagrant. Uh, I don't have uh, how many of you are familiar with Vagrant? But basically, Vagrant is a gem that layers on top of La VirtualBox, which controls the ability to create and destroy La Virtual machines on your, on your, on your local system. Uh, next thing you're going to need is Chef Server. Uh, you can download uh, one from opscode.com, or you can use like, Hosted Chef. Um, because Vagrant uses La, uses La VirtualBox, uh, you have to have a physical machine, meaning that this setup will not work on a VM because it's a VM and it's already La, La, uh, La virtualized. Um, and the last thing you're going to need is Food Critic, because basically it's a Lint tool for Chef. Kind of like Jason Lint, uh, it works the same as Actware. So in, on our Jenkins box, then I'm going to be showing a demo of all this. It's not just screenshots. So. Um, on our Jenkins setup, there's multiple jobs. Uh, the first job in the list basically validates your Chef code, meaning that it runs the, the Ruby syntax checker and food credit, giving you basic validations. Uh, the next one is uploading your, your cookbooks to a Chef server. So what, what one of the tests does is make sure that you, can, that you have the ability to actually upload your cookbook to a Chef server. Uh, a lot of times if you have like a syntax error in your code, uh, you can't upload your changes at all. It spits out, it basically like, spits out an error. Um, and the last job, by the way, is Vagrant. So basically, Jenkins spins up a VM, applies all your recipes to the VM, and destroys the VM after it's done. Uh, this is a typical layout of what Food Critic does. Um, and as you can see, it typically, Food Critic has some basic roles um, for rules, as far as um, kind of like think of it as a, as a style guide for Chef versus like Ruby. Um, this piece of code right here, this is a Jenkins job that actually outlines uh, Jenkins and tells, Jen and tells uh, Jenkins how to spin up a VM and how to apply those roles on that VM. Um, and for the last piece, the third job is mini-tests. Um, this is a basic example of how you write um, like mini-tests for your, for, your, for your live recipes. Um, in this case, this job is, is typically checking that a certain file does exist after a chef run. A lot of times during a chef run, you, you might tell chef, you know what, let's go ahead and start the, the, the live passenger process for a Rails app, but it, it's not actually started. So it's very important to write test for your recipes after a, a chef run. And this is one of the jobs that, that, that Jenkins actually does. Now it's time for the demo. So now here's all the jobs that I've outlined. 
um, the first job that we that that we're going to run uh, is our validation. And basically, what this does is this is basically going to run our our um, Ruby checker and it's going to run food credit to display any warnings. Uh, this typically takes about about five ten minutes, um, so it's better to get a really beefy box if you're going to be running multiple chef repos um, on the same like Jenkins box. Go ahead, Ron. I was just going to ask. So you're actually starting the Vagrant VMs as a part of executing. Yes. So every single job, like let's say I commit a new file, once that gets pushed up to GitHub, Jenkins actually detects that change, downloads it, uploads that cookbook to the chef server, starts up a new VM, bootstraps it to Chef, and it runs all those recipes against that box and validates that it actually runs. Um, and, and it <coughs> destroys the VM after it's done. So you get a fresh VM every single build. And those tests are executing the test suite against the running VM? Yes. Yes. And you can uh, test, and I'll show you right now, you can test against multiple, um, sorry, my vocal is running a little slow. Uh, you can test against multiple uh, machines. So if we here I'm testing against a CentOS image, a, a, a Red Hat 5.5 image, and a Red Hat 6 image. So you can test all different uh, platforms of your recipes to ensure that, 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 that they actually work. Um, I'm not going to run the, the Vagrant job because it actually takes a good 30 minutes <laughs> to actually run. Um, but I'll go ahead and I'll run the next one. Uh, the second job actually tests the ability to upload your, your cookbooks to a uh, to a chef server, assuming that your Ruby syntax is correct. And for the last one, we're going to run. Um, here's all the resources you need, by the way, to run this. Um, I am going to be posting a full blog uh, post on my blog with all the job, uh, with the zip file of like all the job files you need for Jenkins um, to get this running. Um, the same exact thing I'm actually going to be implementing for, for Opscode soon. So Opscode is going to be having this, this feature on Opscode.com. So um, I'm not sure how, how many of you use Chef currently. Um, one person. So okay. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty dead simple. Um, obviously, at Disney, we have you know quite a bit of like since admins are using this, so it makes very good sense for us to be able to test our changes before they get rolled in into product. Any questions? So you mentioned you know sometimes when one chef to start the process, but it doesn't in fact start up. Mm -hmm. Why? Why would that happen? Um, so, for example, Chef goes ahead and let's say it starts up Apache, for example, right? Apache's running, uh, it starts it, Apache starts s successfully, and then like 15 seconds later, a Apache stops. So that might be a good test case. Um, so obviously, the mini tests get ran after a Chef run. Um, and let me see if I can show an example of that. Okay, so you see here, uh, this recipe will get applied first up to your roll, and at the end of a chef run, it'll run as many number of uh, tests as it needs to run. It only runs the test for the recipes that are, the, the, that are being applied to that node. Alright, um, okay, so for example, um, files for example, that, that are being created. Uh, this recipe is only installing one package, which is the unzip package. So for a simple test like this, I describe the package and it installs unzip, uh, and I specify that the package must be installed. So that's a sample, uh, a, a sample uh, test to actually test that a package is installed. Um, the rest simply tests that files actually exist. Um, what this recipe does is it downloads the files to the local file system. So I wrote a test to make sure that those files actually do exist on the files. Um, and at the end of a chef run, if any of your tests fail, that's a chef exception, meaning that that node will not deconverge, those changes will not happen on the 
unless those tests are that. Any other questions? How are those tests actually run? They they're run on the the node of the test, or they're run from a remote node? Uh, they run on the physical node itself. Okay. Uh, so all your tests go into the cookbook under a certain directory, and the mini test picks up all those files and runs each one. So, so those tests actually run not only when you're like doing your tests, but when you deploy to a production machine. And the test also yeah, runs. it runs as the very last step. Okay. Yeah. Beyond environment, how much time it takes to run tests? Um, it really depends on how many recipes you have applied. Average. Average, 10 seconds. And that's pretty much it. Um, my contact info, if you guys have any questions? Good question. Uh, I have a check, mm -hmm. but I don't know, does it also work with routers and switches, or is this exclusively used for servers? Uh, it's mainly for for uh, servers, but there are ports out there that people are actually extending it to, to work on routers and switches. I don't know the extent of that yet. I don't know if that's going to be officially like important. But right now, it's mainly it's mainly for servers. Is, is that Twitter handle spelled correctly? Yes, it is. I know it's it, it actually is spelled Brain Scott. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Brain Scott was already taken. <laughs> um, but it's good someone pointed that out because a lot of us were following the other kind Yes, yes. <laughs> and um, ask questions and confuse that guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I, always, I always wonder how many mis like tweets or like direct messages I actually miss because people try and add Brian Scott and not Brian Scott. Right. Uh, yeah, uh, you can monitor my blog. I'm going to be doing a full post on this with detailed information on exactly how to set this up. Um, and I think also, I think Chef's going to have RSpec for Chef too, so it will support not just mini tests, but RSpec as well. Uh, there's also cucumber-chef.org, so you can write cucumber tests for Chef. Um, my next talk, I'll probably be like demoing like cucumber in Chef. Um, obviously, much, I'll do a much more better demo. But you have to start the demo like the day before. Yes. <laughs> so, any questions? That's it.